I'm Mark Plakis from Orange Silicon Valley, and I'm here with Robert Weiderman, the uh, General Manager and Executive VP for Nuance Enterprise Division, and we're talking about customer care in some new ways. So Robert, um, when we talk about intelligent assistance, which Nuance has been shipping for some time, what are, what are, what are some of the new elements of this in the retail environment, in in-store environment? Well, we're seeing a, a, a growing interest to start. And so, uh, I think here at the conference you've seen Domino's and Coca-Cola. So more of the retail-oriented players are recognizing that the technology actually works now um, and can deliver a, a, a really human-like interaction through the web, through mobile applications. Um, but when you think of having the, the, the intelligent assistance in the cloud, and its ability to kind of create a cognitive layer for understanding what people are asking, be able to, to ask them clarifying questions and use text-to-speech to, to respond back to them. It's not limited by mobile apps or websites. It can actually proliferate much more broadly. And uh, one interesting area that we're seeing is a growing interest from the robotics community, um, where we've actually seen implementations now um, using our technology uh, to be able to have in-store greeters um, that are humanized robots that can uh, respond to people's questions about, you know, where's the men's shoe department or, um, you know, where's the, where's the, you know, the customer service area um, and, and actually engage with the customer as part of the store experience. And so that would be an actual conversation. So that's where uh, nuanced speech recognition, natural language comes into play. Um, another area that we see on the radar screen is, is the Internet of Things um, and things that need attention and uh, may need to be interacted with without any keyboard. Is that a, an area that you, you see some customer interest in? Uh, not just customer interest, where Nuance is actually shipping. So, um, you know, the Internet of Things, there's a lot of things. And when you think of, of um, kind of new application areas that have emerged just in the past year or so, um, the smart television, and so we're shipping with LG and a number, a number of, of manufacturers now where you can actually speak to the television set and it understands you in an intelligent way. You can ask it, um, you know, what Robin Williams movies are playing tonight, those types of things. Um, the connected car um, is another environment. The, the car is becoming essentially a big Internet of Things. Some car manufacturers are actually including wireless in the car proper. Um, and so, so that's going to proliferate into wearables. And so when you look at, at form factors that are going to be too small for people to interact with um, in a reasonable way, um, and that'll proliferate even more broadly as, as, as things get into the home and so on. Um, we think a, a key technology that we have that adds to not only the dialogue-based systems we have, the speech recognition-based systems we have, uh, is voice biometrics. And so... Um, being able to have an a intelligent assistant in the cloud that understands what you say using speech recognition, can talk back to you using text-to-speech, has intelligence and, and, and dialogue uh, capabilities through a cognitive brain, um, backed by voice biometrics that can actually identify who you are, offers up a lot of opportunities, not just in the security area, which is kind of obvious, yeah. but more important in the personalization area, where you may have an interaction with an intelligent assistant that is tailored to, to yourself, and if the, if the intelligent assistant can actually recognize it's you speaking, then that experience can be tailored automatically. Um, if you wanted to you know, keep your children from viewing certain television, then integrated with a smart TV is going to enable that. And so we're really putting in the cloud all the human types of, of traits that you would need and, and, and it's really unlimited what that can be connected to. Well, last question. When you talk about the cloud and you talk about Internet of Things, you're talking about a lot of data. Now, you're in, a, uh, in the room with a lot of um, contact center managers, customer care officers. Um, are you starting to see the data scientists in that room as well? Uh, we're seeing, uh, maybe not in this room, um, but we're definitely seeing them within the customers we engage with. Um, the data analytic people, also the security people. And so, I mean, as, as a business right now, Nuance is processing over 5 billion interactions in the cloud through our various lines of businesses. Um, we know how to handle these things and how to leverage the data. Um, the reason these systems have become much more effective is because they're data-driven. 
the more data we have that we can apply to our statistical models and our analytical models, the more accurate and intelligent these systems can become, not just for each industry, but even for specific customers. So I think we would all agree that the age of big data has come to customer care? I think the, the age of, of, of big data and artificial intelligence has come to customer care. Fantastic. Thanks so much. Thank you.